Generative AI is not new. There are several architecture that has been used for text generation in generative AI. In this video, I am going to give an overview about the different types of architecture which has been used before transformer. That is text generation before transformer. Let me give you my introduction. My name is Dr. Ayan Devnath and you are watching AD Academy. I am an alumni of IIT Delhi and I have 9 plus years of experience in the field of data science, AI, machine learning, deep learning. Generative AI is not new. There are lots of architecture and techniques has been used previously also for text generation in generative AI. In earlier days of text generation before transformer, we used bag of words, TF, IDF and what to wake like techniques to generate different kind of text prediction. One of the main disadvantage of these techniques are that the sequence information is discarded. To overcome this disadvantage, another architecture called RNN or recurrent neural network has been used. In the left hand side, we are seeing a diagram of RNN which shows that it is taking an input and it is giving as an output and that output has been taken as an input for a feedback. And in the right hand side, it shows the expanded diagram of the architecture. Though it is a powerful technique, but it has some limitations. First of all, it is limited by the amount of the compute and the memory needed to perform well. And if the RNN structure is large then it leads to vanishing and exploding gradient problem it means that the weight updation is not happening in case if rnn structure is very large moreover rnn is very slow to train if you are giving small input sequences then rnn can still predict and generate text but if the input sequences is very large then it is very difficult for RNN to rightly predict or to generate text. Another very big disadvantage of RNN is that it is difficult to train the data in parallel using multi-GPU. To overcome the disadvantage of RNN, another architecture called long short term memory that is LSTM has been used. So what I have said in RNN is that if there is small input sequence that small sentences say I am saying few words like I am a good boy. In this case, these input sequences are small. So the output text generation is quite okay. But if you are giving long sentences like too many sentences or a paragraph has been given as an input sequence to RNN, then it fails to predict text generation because when the number of sentences is very big, then RNN tends to forget what it has learned previously. And thus we are bringing LSTM into the picture where it has a memory cell. So in this diagram, in this diagram, this portion is the memory cell. This portion is the forget gate. What does forget gate do? It removes irrelevant information. This one is the input gate which adds or removes information and this one is the output gate. Thus with the help of forget gate it tries to remove the irrelevant information which it has seen over the lots of sentences or the paragraph and with the help of input gate it add or removes the relevant information to the memory cell and by doing an average or summation of it it throws an output through the output gate rnn previously i have mentioned that rnn has a problem of vanishing gradient if the architecture is too large it means that the weight updation is not taking place LSTM has come into picture and it resolves this vanishing gradient problem and LSTM has the ability to learn long term dependencies but there are lots of disadvantages also in RNN I have already mentioned that if the architecture is large then it is very slow to train and also it is very slow to perform because inputs are given in sequences LSTM is also very slow to train and it requires more memory and LSTM is very easy to overfit. 
so by now we came to know that rnm and lstm has lots of disadvantages so researchers at that time they were thinking to make some new kind of architecture which can process in a well manner so that we can give large input sequence as an input and we can get output in a well manner researchers came up with sequence to sequence architecture sequence to sequence means in input we are giving a long sequence of text and in output we are expecting also a sequence of text so here we are seeing two parts of sequence to sequence one is the encoder and another is the decoder so this is an overview of the architecture the concept of sequence to sequence has been widely used in nlp in different applications let's take an example that you want to translate from english to french it means that in the input you, you are giving an english sentence and in the output you are expecting an french sentence english sentence has been given as an input to the encoder this encoder architecture can have different types of cells in it we are passing an english sentence as an input sequence to the encoder here for an example he loved to eat is that english sentence now the encoder is comprised of different types of rnn and lstm each of the input sequences after getting process is converted to a context vector it means that the words are converted to a kind of vector which it can process and the encoder is sending this context vector to the decoder where decoding has been done by using different types of rnn and the lstm architecture and finally the decoder is providing french sentence and thus we are having the translation from english to the french this is the first part of text generation before transformer using rnn lstm and sequence to sequence in the next part i will cover the rest so keep watching